<sighs> is that is that what you wanted, Earthy? Yeah. Looking after Mama. Oh, oh. you want. You want just uh, a little more to wrap up the story? Yeah, you're just so hard on me. Uh, I'm a stand-up comedian. And uh, this story just uh, rips open my heart. Mm. <laughs> Makes me like absolutely vulnerable. But it'll be good for other people to hear about it. And you've You've helped me through it. Yeah. Look at it. I'm a dedicated son, okay? And I'm not going to let mom die like this. Uh -uh. So I arranged an ambulance uh, to transport Helen to a hospice in Lake City that's near the family home. Well, mom's got to be nearby physically. Uh, well, staff warns me, uh, <clears throat> your mother very likely won't make it back. An hour by freeway in an ambulance? Mm -mm. Shut up! Un- Plug my mother now. My mom and I are psychic. She'll make it. Put her on a gurney and wheel her to the ambulance now. Hospice, huh? Well, this is a new trip for me. What's a hospice? Well, I grab a brochure on the way out. I thought a hospice was where uh, charming elder people sit around in overstuffed chairs and swap uh, stories about their exotic lives. And surgeries? Okay. Uh, no food. Yeah, just don't give them any food and they will go up the ladder to heaven. Well, uh, whoops. No hydration? What does that mean? No water? Alright, well, um, yeah, most people, uh, life expectancy in a hospice, no food, no water. 7 to 14 days. And, uh, anybody would die. I mean, some of my friends and are, you know, helping each other out, is that when it comes to our time, we can do a hospice without being in a hospice. You stay at home if you have a loved one who loves you enough that will attend to you and give you comfort care, like keep your mouth moist, swab your mouth out, keep your lips moist. I've been doing this for mom on a daily basis. I'm a nurse, you know. Uh, it's you know, crushed pain pills and, you know, uh, just on the tongue, but no water, huh? Yeah, you'll, you'll just pass away on your own. At home. With all your favorite loved ones, they have you. Hmm. Oh, <clears throat> I'm pretty fucked up by now. Yeah, I got the uh, hospice staff aid. So they send in a uh, Methodist minister to counsel me. And I explained that everything's happening too fast. Mm. He suggests that uh, he 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 uh, include my father's death in a prayer service at his church, just down the road in a couple of weeks. Pick a Sunday. <laughs> uh, I appreciate his love and kindness. I feel better.
Well, I'm serious with my parents. Uh, or let me give you some uh, parental feedback. Uh, my father loved my writing. What did he love about it? The honesty. You know what? There aren't that many honest people around. They're all set up protecting their ass for some reason or another. So my dad liked my writing. I'm, you know, people talk like people, you know. And he, he streetwise, he ran away from uh, his uh, abusive mother, religious fanatic, kept beating him with a bell as he hid under the bed. He took off to California when he was 14 years old. Okay. Lived out there, came back. So by the time he he uh, romanced mom, he he was already uh, streetwise, and so out to California with her. He'd already been out there a couple of times. Got a job at 15, working at uh, Yellowstone Park. People took him in in San Diego. Salvation Army took him in. Got some foster parents. Helped him finish school a little bit. But mom, huh? yeah, I had sent her the, the, my uh, my manuscript, my latest book, and it, 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 I was at the top of my game on this. I'm so proud of it, and uh, you know, I sent it ahead because I'm flying down for a visit and uh, visit and settle down, catch up on family news, and uh, then mom comes out of her bedroom with the manuscript. I am amazed, okay? Mom is actually taking a pair of scissors <laughs> and cut out all the curse words physically from the manuscript. And uh, when she holds it up to the light, it looks like a sort of paper doll cut out by an inmate in a lunatic bin. She's totally innocent in her. Well, anyway, I got good news, okay? I can now talk directly to the spirit of my mother. You don't need language <laughs> when you can't talk. <laughs> you have all this going on. Uh, because she knows her life partner is dead. Well, what can you do? Okay. Uh, and uh, so I ask her spirit, uh, oof. Um, Reynolds is afraid to leave the trailer without you uh, and to go to heaven. Uh, can, can you help him? Yeah. And, uh, spirit of Helen answers, I cannot. Mm. Because I cannot find my way home. I'm lost. It makes perfect sense. I mean, Harry Allen got lost all the time, even within the trailer park. I mean, all the deputy sheriffs in Lake City knew Happy Helen on a first name basis. That late night call comes in. Oh, yeah, Happy Helen, what's she up to? Oh, she's rummaging through. She's actually pawing through the trunk of his neighbor's car to search for the. Tomb of Tutankhamen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Therefore, I, I need to empathize with the spirit of my mother. Thank you, Earthy, for showing me this trick. Identity, truth, identity from within, so I can actually show it. What is my mother feeling by being my mother? <laughs> Stranded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in absolute bewilderment. Misplaced. Mm. An incomprehensible realm from God knows where. Yeah. Dad won't leave the house. 
mother's loss and she can't find her way home. Mm. So my spiritual mission becomes how am I going to get the spirits of my dead, well, once dead, of my parents together? Yeah, dad's dead, huh? One's dead, and the other is alive. But out of her mind, yeah, oh. This stuff is not in the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Eerie silence. I'm exhausted as can be. I'm spiritually bamboozled. Been up all night again. Uh, son is thinking about coming up? Maybe. Uh, I'm staring at Dad's cremated remains in a plastic bag on the dining room table. Died from gross obesity. He only weighs two kilos now. I mean, he's so light now, I can hold Dad in the palm of my hand. Yeah. Uh, and I had imagined that created remains look like, you know, what's left over in the fireplace after you make a fire. Yeah, sooty, ashy, but no. It's like pulverized opalescent seashells. It's just so gorgeous, the created remains, at least of my father. I've never seen anybody else's. Oh, shiny, opalescent... Uh, Fuck it. I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> I gotta be a good boy and get the spirits of my parents back together. Impulsive. Dazed. Um, you know what? I'm gonna take the direct physical approach of getting them back together. So I take... I conceal, actually, my little cardboard box of Dad's created remains. Yeah, we're humble. It's like not in a urn or anything. And uh, head out for the nursing home. Let's get them together. Well, we're a little. It won't open for a little bit. So we stop at a uh, fancy coffee shop, and the hungry ghost of my dad. What does he want? Oh yeah, venti mocha with extra whipped cream. Well, I indulge myself with a New York Times. A rare newspaper in this provincial part of Florida. Mm. Yeah. Well, Dad, Spirit, and I, still in the flesh, uh, arrive at the hospice exactly when it opens. Yeah, I'm the first in. Ah, beautiful Florida Sunday morning, windows open, breezes coming in, all the rooms, birds chirping like there's no tomorrow. Oh, I'm starting to feel good. <laughs> yeah. A uh, little clock next to the registration book. I sign in at 7 o'clock. Uh, yeah, I sign in at uh, 7 o'clock and walk down to Mom's room. Got the little... Dad in the little cardboard box on the side, yeah. I'll try anything to get them back together. 